Whoa, there we go. Ooh. Hello. 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 Um, I heard that not that many people knew about Roblox, so you should probably explain. I mean, is, was that right? Not that many people clapped when he asked that? You should explain what Roblox is before we go on. Well, you know, you'll all come out of here enlightened now that you'll know about what Roblox is. So <laughs> Roblox is actually not a gaming company. We're a technology platform that allows young people to create, develop, and code games and publish it on our platform. We now have over 95 million monthly active users on our platform. It's global. We have um, over 50 million different experiences that have been published onto our platform, all of those being user generated. And so we, we really embrace the whole idea uh, around creativity and expression. And we allow these young people to create and monetize the experiences. Some of our top developers now have been on the platform for over 10 years, and they're making over $5 million a year. So if that doesn't get your attention, maybe some of you will become developers as well um, on Roblox. Yeah, so, so one of the reasons I wanted to do this conversation with Tammy and do it uh, uh, around Roblox is, uh, if you're not aware, so many of, of uh, the young people uh, 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 kids, my kids, uh, all the kids that my kids are friends with, they spend an enormous amount of time on the, on the Roblox uh, platform. And I was sort of interested, you know, I've spent so many years looking at, at games, things with really traditional rule structures, really traditional uh, incentive structures, um, um, but, but the, the things are becoming so, um, in the digital world, in, in, in what I call the new childhood, the, the, the digital is becoming so integrated in the, in the way that we live, right? These are no longer separate things. There's not like digital play and regular play. Like it's, they're, all, they're always together. So I was really interested in, in, in this and how we start to deal with those questions of building positive intentional play for kids, and, and the reason I wanted to do this with you and, and, and hope to do it uh, with you and with other people a lot more uh, in, in the coming uh, uh, months and years is, is because I think we really need a sort of grassroots movement of parents who's, who, and, 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 and teachers and grown-ups who understand how digital works, who are working with developers and designers uh, in order to think about how we want those spaces to operate for our for our kids, how we want them, how we want our kids to learn through that through that play that happens in a digital place. Because as we all know, there is so much learning that that does happen through play. So that's what that's why I wanted us to have this conversation. So I, I think we should start by just talking a bit just about what it means to have a digital play space. Mm -hmm. So at Roblox, we see it firsthand because our platform is so large. Um, there is such a tremendous opportunity, and, and really our, our platform has grown by leaps and bounds in the last couple of years. And so at Roblox, we really feel a responsibility and an opportunity um, to help educate this next generation. In a lot of ways, we feel like the millennials um, did not have the same nurturing that uh, now the opportunity with this Gen Z, this new, newer generation needs to have in order to really, really help to support um, a really healthy human ecosystem with people who have great life skills and resilience. So, you know, we, I was thrilled when um, Jordan asked me to join him um, after reading The New Childhood and the book, there was so much that resonated about the power of play the need for play, um, and how our society is, in some respects, um, there is a, a nervousness, a trepidation, and, and a lack of awareness for, for maybe a better, better way of um, describing what's going on in the digital space. And so um, with Jordan's book, he really, really points out that digital play is a necessarily, necessary requirement for, for growth. Yeah, I think that's true. I mean, I think there's a, there's a lot of understanding among educators, among 
um, psychologists, among, among, even among mo a most parents of how important play is, right? It's a very different, t you know, years ago there used to be a lot, of, a lot of pushback against play. People wanted lots of rigid, uh, rigid structure in childhood. That, I, that's not real, I mean, you still hear people framing it as if it's one against the other, but I think mostly when you look around, you see people who recognize how important play is, recognize that play is, 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 what, uh, is where kids develop uh, so many of the key social skills, so many of the key skills in their, in their lives. Um, uh, what people don't recognize, I think, is that play is never neutral. Um, that all play has always been situated in some kind of technological reality, right? There, there, were, there, were, no, there were no playgrounds before the 19th century. There were no sandboxes. There were no swings, right? These things developed because of economic and technological changes and ways to adapt to those to those changes, and I think we're now living at a time where, where, where we're sort of imagining there's such a thing as this, uh, this perfect play. You hear a lot of parents who are like, oh, you know, we need good old-fashioned wooden toys. Well, wooden toys only existed for a very short amount of time in, 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 in history, and those all existed because they helped um, acclimate young people to certain kinds of ways of being with tools, and so it's time for for, that we really do need kids to have the chance to experiment and to fail and to be a great at creative with digital tools. And this is one of the things that interests me about Roblox. I'll be honest, I haven't played, well, I would actually, I don't think I've ever played Roblox, but I've spent lots of time watching my, my kids and talking to my kids about it um, um, and seeing what they do. And what I see are these sort of, it, you know, it reminds me of when I was a kid on the playground and we would make up games and, the, and we were, we, you know, we would be on one corner of the playground, you have kids who have built an entire rocket ship game. On the other side, they're playing some made up ball game and they're totally different things, but they have all these rules and structures. And what really excites me about Roblox is I'm watching kids doing that, right? My stepdaughter, who's like, I'm figure skating. I'm like, well, what's the object? She's like, nothing, you just figure skate. I'm like, that, that, that's what you do? I'm like, yeah, and all of my friends are here doing it with me. And I'm like, well, that's kind of cool, right? Right? And then on the other hand, I have my 14-year-old who I'll see him on Roblox, and he's like building serious military campaigns through I don't know where, but it's like you know serious and and uh, and, and and they're marching and they're and they're and they're talking. And to me, that becomes a really interesting question: of What does it mean to sort of be be the 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 manufacturer of those spaces? Yeah, and you know, it, and 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 with Roblox, that's the unique thing about it is that it's not a um, pre-organized building sandbox. It is truly an open platform where you can create any sort of experience from your imagination. You know, the, the funny thing is, is there are the quirkiest games and experience on Roblox because it comes out of the imagination of young people. One of the most popular games on our platform is work at a pizza place. You know, who, who would know that work at a pizza place would have billions of visits, and um, you know he's one of our top developers who who's making a living off of this game where you are either a cashier, you're a delivery person, you're a supply chain person, <laughs> you're spinning the pizza dough. But it is um, it's a place where kids can hang out with their friends. Um, you know they, we used to say get outside and play with your friends. Well now my kids say I am playing with my friends. There is no more line between the digital world and the physical world. And we need to prepare our young people to, and, and, and get into this world so that we can serve as mentors. We can show them the rules of, of how to create positive experiences for themselves. But you hear from parents, I hear from parents, maybe you don't, but I'm guessing you do. Uh, parents are scared. <clears throat> parents, um, I cannot tell you how many parents I've talked to who feel guilty. They have cried to me saying, gosh, I have no idea what my kids are doing on these devices. Um, I feel like I don't get to spend enough time with them. Am I a bad parent? I have, I've heard every, everything. Um, and the reality is, is that you know, we are very, I think we're very early on in this digital world. And I think that we need to stop feeling, making each other feel guilty. Right, stop making each other, we're all learning and evolving together. Our pl Roblox platform is continuing to learn and evolve. Um, we have, you know, we have all of the parental controls, no chat, chat with everyone, chat with friends. We have 
filters. We have eight, over 800 human moderators. We have AI technology. You know, safety is our number one focus in, on our community. Um, I think this is, might be an interesting thing to get your point of view on, on the safety protocols of, of I, robots. I, I, you know, look, I, I, when I think about, I, I hear you saying all these, I'm glad the, about all of these things, but when I hear you saying all these things, I'm sort of like, there's a piece of me that goes, when I imagine those kids that were over there playing their ball game and those kids that were over there playing their rocket ship game, and when I imagine that, I go, you know, we, we, don't, we don't ask um, the playground manufacturers to make sure the kids don't bully, right? Like, we don't tell the sliding board people, like, well, how come you're making sure nobody's racist, right? Like, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't do that. And, and, and while I, that doesn't mean I'm saying, like, that, I, I just, I, I don't want to absolve that. Like, I'm, I'm reading the same articles about YouTube that we're all reading, and, and there's a part of me that's going, well, yeah, you have to have some kind of structure. But then on the other hand, like, I, I don't know how to, how to match this when we get into this. Like, this is a big tension I haven't quite resolved. So how do you think, like, well, you, you can probably only say certain things to <laughs> that question. <laughs> um, I do think, you know, safety, because our audience is, is younger, um, our, a lot of our developers are teens and early 20s. Um, we do need to have um, some, some features and safety protocols in place to, to keep um, some safety around, uh, where, around where these kids are playing. That said, um, we are huge believers in open play. <clears throat> and I think that's part of the problem now. I think that our... our Young people are in such um, constraints. They're so programmed in, in the world today that it's very, very difficult for kids to be free. And the reason why Roblox has taken off like wildfire is because it's an area where they can communicate freely with friends. They can create experiences on their own. And it's the one open field where they can express themselves. They can learn such goodness. They've made some of their best friends on Roblox, and they go and visit them. They've experienced bullying. How do you deal with that? How do you, you re, we have reporting structures. They learn from each other. They stand up for one another. But again, this is how you learn how to deal with, with things in the real world to create resilience. Yeah, but you, like, so, so, you know, when I told my, my, my kids that I was coming here today and that we were gonna be doing this, their first response was, tell them to fix the chat filter. It's, ter <laughs> it's terrible. We, we can't say the things we want to and then once you learn how to trick it, you can say things you shouldn't be allowed to say that upset us, right? And they, they I, I mean, not to push you to explain the chat filter, but more to say like, just the, to me there's something absurd about, uh, about the fact that that's even your, like imagine, my, when my kids play with Lego and like there's nothing they fight about mu uh, more than whose minifigure belongs to who. They'll be like, that's my minifigure. No, that was my guy. Like they'll scream and fight, they'll end up in a fist fight about that. I would never imagine calling Lego, and I, I can, I know them, I can, I can pick up the phone. I would never imagine calling them and going, why haven't you made sure that my kids don't fight? <laughs> that's true. You know, uh, there is, there are a couple of different ways we can go. We can completely take off all the chat filters completely and let, let the kids say anything that they wanted. Um, that would be an interesting experience <laughs> for, for, our, for our moderation <laughs> team and for our company. Um, and that said, you know, I think that, again, we are in the very evolution, very early stages of um, evolution in the digital world. So who yeah. knows where it will so go. So that's as much as I can get, I can get out of you, <laughs> out of you <laughs> on, on that one. Okay, um, okay so then, then how do you think about where the line is for what's, the, what, what's a designer's responsibility as opposed to what's a, what's a I don't know if I should just say parent, but, but a, a social responsibility, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I, when my kids were very little, when I took them to the playground, and at first, like, I had got on the monkey bars with them and went down the sliding board with them, and every time they interacted with another kid, I went, don't hit, no, be nice, no calling names, you, no biting, that's the one you have to say a lot, 
right? <laughs> you think you wouldn't have to, but it doesn't, you know. But, n but n you know. are these your kids? Yeah, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, no biting. You must share, right? Also, you know, some of it's like s just safety. You know, don't run there when it's wet. Those mm -hmm. kind of things. But there's a lot of like, I held their hand. I taught them how to have appropriate play behavior. Uh, I, I think there's a real failure in our entire society to recognize that we have to hold our kids. You know, we sort of think a, a digital space is a space that we just give to them, right? Um, right? I mean, I think I, I probably uh, I, I probably spent six years teaching my kids how to play with other kids in the playground before I let them completely free, mm -hmm. right? Um, yeah. uh, we, and we don't, we don't do that. So how do you think about where is actually the responsibility uh, like, where is that line where we go, hey, society needs to figure out how to teach individuals to, who have the right kinds of behaviors and the right kinds of values for a play space versus the platform should be responsible. I, I feel like I'm defending Ro like yeah. Roblox shouldn't have to do any, no, I'm, I really don't mean that. But. Thanks, Jordan. Um, so I'm gonna, you know, I think my, my teenage daughter is very, very, very wise. And I, again, I go back to the, the fact that our digital world is still really, really new, right? Um, I failed. I um, was one of those parents who got a device and put it in their hands and went to go cook dinner and go take a shower and go do other things while they were in this world that I didn't know about. And I'm in technology, right? So I should know better. I should be more savvy. And so having this conversation with my teenage daughter now, I ask her, and I'm a little bit more savvy about all of these things at this, at this moment she? in time. She's 18. Yeah. I asked Maya, I said, how would you, how would you handle um, digital devices with your kids? And she said, well, you let us roam free. You gave us no structure, no rules. The moment I put a device in my child's hand, when they're two years old, I will make sure they have the lessons and they know how to respond to bullying. They'll know, they'll know that they can come to me and they need to come to me if they see anything inappropriate. And I, you know, it was just this dawning that um, there is a generation that just didn't know any better not bad or good, just didn't know. And so I have great hope for our next generation that they will be much more resilient in the, in the digital world. I see it every day. I know that at Roblox, um, we feel very fortunate to have parents reach out to us, um, kids who are going through tremendous health problems, kids who are on the spectrum, um, they come to Roblox because it's the place where they feel like a kid, who they're not judged, they can create avatars of themselves. Um, they, for example, there was, there was one child who had just finished um, a very successful bout of uh, cancer treatments, and his dad asked him, what do you wanna do? Let's, 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 let's move on to this next chapter. And he said, I wanna meet the people who made Roblox. So they came to, on a tour, and our entire company what, like, just was so excited <laughs> to have him there. Um, and the mom said that it was the first time in a six-year battle, this little boy was nine, six-year battle, where um, anytime he was on Roblox, he felt like he wasn't the kid with cancer. He wasn't the bald kid. He wasn't the kid with needles in his arms. He was just like every other kid. And so if we can create experiences like that in the digital world, what a beautiful thing. All we need to do is figure out how to, as, as adults, give the, give the construct of civil behavior to our kids in order to be able to thrive. Okay, so let, let me, let me, uh, uh, I'm gonna. I mean, gonna I don't. Poke me? I don't want to. Yeah, I don't want to. <laughs> <answer story. laughs> I'm in that position, so I guess I'll just uh, lean into it. <laughs> um, uh, I mean, it's great. It's a great story, and we have tons of research that, that backs up the fact that often what happens in online games and online communities is is that that people end up forming um, cliques and groups and communities that are that are based around uh, around common interests or common skill sets and not around the traditional 
uh, sort of identity markers, whether that's race or gender or religion or ethnicity, you know, things that, that are sometimes great and sometimes really problematic I, I identity markers. And there's lots of research showing that this is what happens, that often you try to game with the people that are as good as you at gaming, for example, you know, just to make it very simple, although it's often much more nuanced than just are you good or are you bad at, at, at this game. It's also about how you play, what you want to play, what kinds of things you do. But that is also what happens in social media um, and what happens on Reddit and what happens on Discord and what happens on YouTube that allows the, the community building of the hate groups at the same time, mm -hmm. right? So at the same time, while this is a beautiful story and I'm glad for all the kids who were previously alienated that we have these spaces where they can not feel that way, I'm certainly not belittling that, but that same mechanic uh, is what al is what allows for the rise of a of a of a of a lot of, of a lot of hate and a lot of aggression and a lot of things that I think most people in this room would like to see less of. So how do you manage to create a a, a, a new childhood, a new play space, all of these things uh, that on the one hand we're watching for these bad things, but we don't want to eliminate the capacity to be able to to build certain kinds of communities. I mean, we're dealing with a very tenuous question between open and that's closed. That's a that's a hard question. <laughs> I mean, it's like, boy, if I, I wish I had a, a a good answer for that. <laughs> um, we do have filters and and AI that scans for all of that and shuts it down on the on the, on some of the bad actors as well as um, negative content like that. Um, so, you know, I, I do think that in order to thrive and grow and evolve, there, there, there does have to be some, some rules. Yeah. You know, so. But you don't know where the line is. But I don't know where the line is, <laughs> and I think that line moves. I think it, it is continually evolving. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, I think I agree, and I think the, the at least, back, you know, back, I, I said this when we started the conversation, but I'll, I'll say it again. I think it's one of the reasons why I'm so interested in having this conversation with you is I think, uh, you know, even when you watch what's going on with YouTube right now, uh, what's going on with Facebook and the deep fake video, you know, all these things that we're hearing about in the news every day, I think to some extent the only way we're going to, you know, these are giant tensions. Yeah. These are not clear black and white questions. There's no clear, there's not a clear answer here. You know, some, some of the fakes I find really funny and some of the fakes I find not so funny. Usually when it's my side of the political spectrum, I think it's not so funny. But when it's the other side, I'm like, that's pretty funny, right? <laughs> well, you know, that leads to, you know, a really good topic of moral panic. <laughs> you know, there's, there's, a, there's a lot going on right now um, in terms of the headlines, to, you know, in, 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 in some part to try to get clicks, right? that scare people to death. There is so much about tech addiction that's out there, and maybe you're you know, a really good person to address um, the research or the non-research that is, that is out there right now. But you can't, um, you know, you can't read, a, read a news feed without seeing something about tech addiction and how games are so detrimental to life and the unraveling of our of our society, <laughs> right? And I think that's something very interesting in your book that you point out is that throughout civilization, starting from Socrates, right? Books, radio, TV, and now video games, um, at every source of change, there was controversy. Yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's nothing, there's nothing new about, about technophobia. And I think to some extent, um, you know, one of the hardest things, both in writing the book and in every time I have these conversations, is that it really isn't as simple as is it good or is it bad. And in fact, the fears are usually come from a really, a really smart place. I mean, on some level, it's a, is a correct recognition that life as we know it is transforming and we don't know what it's gonna look like and that's scary and that's uncertain and that's unfamiliar and I don't blame anyone for being afraid of that. That's not the same as saying that this is a, necessarily a bad change, right? I don't, I don't, I'm usually pushing back against the idea that it's a bad change, but when you say, yeah, there's headlines that say video games are gonna disrupt our moral fiber, yeah, they're gonna mis disrupt our, maybe for the better. I believe they'll do it for the better, right? Um, but I, they are absolutely disrupting the way, that, the way that kids think. That, you know, those parents are not crazy to be sitting there going, hey, everything's changing. Yeah, you're right. Right, um, um, but I'm not sure you need to be afraid of, of, of that. Um, 
well, I, I absolutely don't think we should be afraid of that. I think the only way we make sure that that becomes a positive thing is by embracing that and making sure we help our kids make, sen make, make sense of those things. So, so the moral panic sort of, it, it, it makes sense to me in that, in that sense. It's always, it's always been true. What really scares me about it, uh, what scares me a lot lately, uh, is there's a lot right now about... Um, Things like anxiety and depression, especially in the UK, anxiety and depression and suicide and, 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 and things like social media. Um, and of course, you know, the, the, the research on this is, um, you know, I, I would like to say, in, I mean, the, let's put it this way. There's research on both sides. One that says that, that, uh, that social media, is, you know, there's no causal connection. And there's one that says that there is a causal connection. Uh, without sort of picking sides, there's one that says you get depressed from being on social media. And then the other side that goes, hey, we're finding that because people can build those kinds of social groups we were just talking about, they're actually having a lot less anxiety. I'm not gonna, you know, if I were to pick a side, I'd pick the one that agrees with what I think, which is not really very scientific. So I'll just sort of go, since, the, <laughs> since they're mixed, I'll assume nobody's right, right? Or, or at least we can't, we can't make a judgment uh, on this yet. Um, um, but I think what, what is, what is um, a little bit nerve wracking for me is yeah. that there are, there are decisions that are being made, there's legislation being made based upon the moral panic headlines. And I think that is where we get into really scary territory, right? So what I have seen from Roblox is um, social dynamics where you know people have found some of their best friends, um, they from around the world, and I think that you know they've been able to create um, experiences that express their imagination and creativity. Um, they've been able to make a living <laughs> out of it, right? Um, and so there's so much goodness that comes from it that I hope that we're moving, we move in a direction that is a positive one that doesn't stifle that, that opportunity. And what scares you? Um, that, you know, there, there might be rules, there might be legislation, there might be laws passed that, uh, that stop allowing this creativity to happen. Yeah, I, I mean, the, the, the thing that, that, that scares me the most in the moral panic thing is um, the, 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 the scapegoating of technology. Um, and while I certainly, as I just said, understand and can sympathize with why people feel that way, uh, I, I'm sort of, I, 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 and you brought up the, the gaming addiction, and, and you know, I'm not gonna, uh, uh, I, I'm not even going to debate with the word because I don't. That's how how silly I think the debate even is to, to 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 exist on some level. But it is certainly possible. There's so many cases. I've met people. I've seen people who develop very unhealthy relationships yes. with digital technology. Uh, people develop unhealthy relationships with lots of things. Um, I'm not. Uh, but I hate when we when that gets scapegoated. That digital. Technology, and the reason that scares me is because I think so much of what we're starting to see on platforms like uh, like like Roblox or Facebook or YouTube on, on this is not not um, you know we like to say it's creating things. I don't think it's really creating uh, much uh, uh, in the sense of uh, of social problems, in the sense of political problems. Um, I won't. I'm not even sure it's amplifying. Right, which is a word a lot of people like to say. It's amplifying existing things. I, I kind of think it might just be reproducing, right? Like it was already as extreme. It's just it's reproducing it in a way where we see it in a in, in a very re regular way. And what scares me to my core is that when we have parents who look at what's happening on these things and go, or adults or grown-ups and look at them and go, this is a problem with the technology. It allows us to not address the real problem. Right, because you may have a, yes, it's true, you may have a kid that borders on addictive behavior when it comes to digital technology, uh, you know, that whatever they're labeling addiction, may, it's probably actually a really unhealthy uh, behavior, whether or not it's addiction or not is a different question, but it probably is unhealthy, not good, not good for the child, not, not good for the family, but it's probably caused by something else, and I don't know what that something else is, right? It's gonna be different for every kid, it might be, Deep trauma. That this kid may may be getting abused. This, you know, we have no idea what's what's going on, and the games become a way of dealing with that. 
Um, and, and yes, we may need to intervene if it becomes an unhealthy way of dealing with that, but if we scapegoat the tech, then we are not going to deal with the real problem, right? And I extend that to a po more giant political question where if we scapegoat fake news, we are not going to deal with the real giant social <laughs> issues that, are, that, underlie, that underlie the world right now. If we, if, we start, if we start sitting there going, hey, it's because you can build deep fake videos, right? No, that's not why. That's not the issue. That's a tool people are using in order to express uh, and express things that need to get addressed uh, uh, in, in, a in a much deeper way. And, and I'm terrified that, that we're going to reproduce that scapegoating behavior because we teach it to our kids every day when we say things like, like you know, don't, you're addicted to that thing. Go, go away from that, right? Like, yeah. stop blaming the thing. Uh, uh, yeah. So in the last few seconds that we have, oh, well, what is your... It didn't even beep bread yet. What is... Oh, they oh it, like, it looked beep bread. Yeah, now it beeped bread. So now right. we have a few we'll more minutes. We this is it. the, like, yeah. <laughs> um, what is your one great hope? What is a positive that you can think of for the gaming field for the future? Uh, my one great hope is actually uh, um, that I think, uh, and it's one of the reasons it's one of the reasons you and I are sitting here together is that uh, is that platforms like. Roblox and like many others, now you're here, so I'm naming that one. But there's lots of others we could name also that give uh, uh, young people the opportunity to experiment in creating worlds and systems and gaming experiences. And and to me, that's more than just a game. That's about thinking about the way you know. That's about creating economies. That's about the way thinking different threads. And I think we're going to end up with a much smarter generation of, of, of kids who have really thought about the way different forces work with each other. Uh, even more so, I think they're going to be able to leverage digital technology in ways we haven't even imagined. And that's going to be because they played with it so much. You know, you think about the first generation of people who were able to do like electronic music, like sequence. I still remember when they were like sequencers, right? We just discovered MIDI. Uh, and it was the and it was the coolest thing in, in yep. the world. And look at what happened to the people who grew up with MIDI versus the ones who were trying to go. You know, how do I take old music and put it in MIDI? Look at what happened to film with, with the people who grew up with digital editing, as opposed to the people who were still trying to go. How can I splice on a on a digital uh, interface? <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah. So, so to me, I think that that all that experimentation is going to create a really, really magical future that we can't imagine yet. And so what we really need to do is be turning to every child and going, here's the values that we care about. Here's what matters. Now go free, but don't ever, don't ever break certain rules about decency and kindness and compassion and, 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 and ethics. Completely agree. And I mean, hope is that Roblox will have um, a very large part and a role for building digital civility in our world and that um, we continue to grow a really healthy gen next generation. Well, we're, we, I think we pushed the time because it's not even blinking <laughs> anymore. So we're going to have to stop. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you all.